Thanks for joining us. In the 2012 season, there are only three players who have played for one team 14 years or more. I sat down with Derek Jeter, Chipper Jones, and Todd Helton, who talk about life in this very exclusive club. Derek, 18 years with the Yankees. <laughs> Could you have ever imagined when you first started out that you'd be with one team that long? I was trying to make it through the first week, to be quite honest with you. I was afraid I was going to get sent down. So, no, it's, it's something that... Um, in this day and age in sports, I think in any sport, you really don't see it too much. It's very, very rare. Over the years, you've seen, you know, stadiums change, rosters change, managers change. What was the toughest one for you along the way? Ooh, uh, I think probably when some of the players leave that you're used to playing with for so long. You know, we've had a lot of successful teams. Um, we develop friendships and guys are like brothers and then when they decide it's time to go home or they get traded somewhere, I think that's probably uh, the most difficult thing to deal with. I think a memory that we're all going to have forever is when Yankee Stadium changed and you took the mic and said, you know, it's going to be okay and we're going to flourish in the new stadium. Was that something you thought about or just happened? No, you know, I, I before it, I, I knew I wanted to acknowledge the fans. Um, I got taken out of the game, I think, with two outs in the ninth inning and then sat there and said, uh-oh, I got to figure out something to say so I just sort of did it off the cuff and, and um, but I was aware of the fact that I wanted to acknowledge Yankee fans. You, you're, you have so many records obviously that we could sit here and talk about forever. Is there one that's more special to you than any other or? I just like to win. You know that's it. I, it's, you know you play this game for one reason and that's to win championships. Uh, I learned that from our owner before he passed away. He especially paid attention to detail and um, coming out here and having the opportunity to win every year. So uh, I mean, I'm most proud of those those five World Series championships. Joe Torre once told me that you are the guy who sets an example and lives lives by it. And I know that your charity is about that. Just talk about that. Yeah, it's a foundation I started called the Turn 2 Foundation after my first full season. And, uh, you know, it's for the prevention of drug and alcohol abuse for kids. And, you know, when I was younger, I looked up to Dave Winfield. He's one of the first athletes to have his own foundation. And uh, I always thought if and when I made it, I wanted to do the same. Well, and that you absolutely did. When you think about over the years, was there ever a moment when you thought that maybe something was going to happen and you weren't going to be a Yankee? Was there ever a time uh, when you thought maybe? Of course. <laughs> you know, I came up in the era when if you didn't perform, they'd get rid of you. And, uh, you know, there are times in the minor leagues when I thought I would be traded. There are times in the major leagues you go through some struggles, you think you may be traded. So it was never a comfortable feeling, and I think that was a good thing for us when we came up. Uh, you know, we, we went out there, we played hard. We knew we had to play hard. We knew we had to do our job. Otherwise, we'll find someone else to do it. When you first start out, you're just trying to stay in the big leagues. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're just trying to, uh, you know, to establish your your place, uh, to figure out where you belong, if you belong, if you can play here. Um, no, you don't think about that. I don't think you ever do, uh, because it doesn't happen that often, uh, especially uh, nowadays. So. Uh, it, to me, it was just um, just right time, right person at the right time. Um, kept my mouth shut a lot, uh, and uh, it paid off. Was there ever a time when you thought that you might be traded, or there might be another team that you were going to go play for? Or? Yeah, I, I was traded once. Uh, pretty much traded. Uh, the trade was already was done, and uh, uh, just our uh, our owner. Uh, and president, uh, you know, came to me and said it was done. But they they decided uh, to, you know, they in their hearts they wanted me to stay. And uh, so at that point, I thought it was gone. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy it worked out the way it did. How long ago was that? 2007, I think it was. 2006, uh, off season 2006. Okay, so you pretty much outlasted, you know, rosters of players, managers. What is that like for you, seeing everybody kind of come and go, and you're still there? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of cool, uh, you know, just just to be here that that long. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it does change, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and that's okay. Uh, um, I've met a lot of good people along the way, and uh, um, you know, the thing that I, I've always kept in mind is the grass is not always greener. Uh, you know, every every organization has their has their problems, and uh, um, it's just how, how you deal with them, and uh, so um, in, in that regard, I, I, you know, I, I just looked at it as how, how can I make this place better while I'm here, and 
instead of worrying about all the trouble. You know, you could have played football. Obviously, you did in, in high school and college or baseball. Why did you Why did you select baseball? Um, I, I really wasn't that good in football. Okay. I, was, I was good enough to, to, to get a college scholarship and to play. But uh, th that next level is, is a different jump. And uh, um, uh, I'd like to think that I was smart enough once I saw what a, what I was lucky enough to play with uh, some good quarterbacks. Yeah. Uh, Keith Schuler being the first one, and uh, you know I could see what what uh, what it took to be an NFL football player. You know, these guys he was drafted third overall, I think, and uh, and I realized that that wasn't me, and I, I didn't have I didn't have uh, what it took. It's kind of funny. You also know Peyton Manning, who now is going to play in your home city here in Colorado. Are you still friends with? I am still friends okay. with him. Uh, he's a, he's a good guy. Um, you know the city's uh, very happy to have him, and uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, you know he's the hardest working guy uh, that I've ever met, and so he'll he'll bring that attitude to the to, to the Broncos, which I think will help. You know you have so many records, you've broken just about everything, and you're gonna go down in history as one of the greatest players, of course, for the Colorado Rockies. But you, you managed to be a superstar and kind of stay under the radar. How do you manage to do that? It's just my. Uh, that's the way I, I like it. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I I don't like to be recognized. I don't like to. Um, yeah, I just it's just the way I live my life uh, as a, as a normal person. Okay, are you a guy who counts all of the doubles, the home runs? I mean, every time you sort of hit a milestone, is it something that you look at and go, wow? Or are you just kind of like, well, it's another one, it's another one? Um, you know, I just take it a day at a time. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's some. You know, some that I get to like. Uh, you get your name put with some other great names that have played the game. Obviously, it's very humbling. Um, and uh, you know, when, when when that happens, um, I do take a step back and say, "Wow, you know, uh, how lucky am I to be able to have had the chance to, uh, to 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 even get to this place where I'm at right now." In 18 years, did you ever think you were going to stay with one team? I didn't think I'd be playing 18 years, much less stay on one team. Um, it's 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 been a good marriage between the two you know there's been some give and take uh, along the way that has uh, allowed this to happen but uh, you know i've always atlanta and bobby cox was was always the place that i wanted to play i was born into this organization bred raised and um just always wanted to reap the benefits at the major league level here in atlanta because uh you know they were the the team that gave me the opportunity to play what was it like to see people, a whole entire teams of people come and go over the years? Well, there's been a lot of turnover. And, and when you've been around as long as I have, uh, you're, you're going to see your fair share of, uh, of different types of players. And um, I, I must say it was a little um, bit of culture shock when the Maddoxes and the Glavins and the Smoltzes, the guys who, you know, helped me so much in my career, not to mention the Justices, McGriffs, Terry Pendleton's, when all those guys moved off and, and the leadership kind of gradually fell on my shoulders, um, that just uh, inspired me to want to wanna play here even more because, you know, they instilled in me, um, you know, what it took to, to be competitive and to win. And, and it was my job to pass the torch on to the next generation. So hopefully the guys in here will say that I've done that at the end of the season when I finally do decide to retire. When you think back to Bobby Cox, of course, such a special manager and a special person, what was that like for you watching him retire? Um, it was a, a little nostalgic for me. He actually drafted me. He was the general manager when, uh, when, when the Braves drafted me. So I have a special allegiance to Bobby. And, you know, Bobby's I always describe Bobby as that favorite grandfather. You know, you got the one grandfather who's real strict and by the book and everything. And then you got that other one who every, the chocolate. every time he shakes your hand, there's a $20 bill in his, in his, in his palm. Uh, Bobby was that kind of guy. He gave me a ton of advice on and off the field. And um, I always felt like I could walk into his office and talk to him, not just as, as manager, but as friend. When you think back over the years, was there ever times whenever you thought maybe you would be traded or things would happen? Um, I thought a time or two after after our run of division titles uh, went by the wayside and we scuffled for, for three or four years, I thought there might be a time when we cut payroll and kind of blow everything up and, and start all over. But uh, the 
the brass, whether it's uh, John Scherholz or, or Frank Wren, always assured me that uh, that was that was never the plan. That um, they were going to continue to uh, uh, put pe put pieces around me, and and uh, I'm very flattered that they thought that that much of me. Chipper Jones will call it a career after the 2012 season, and while Todd Helton and Derek Jeter continue working, in the end, they all have plans for life after baseball. You know, I know that you're going to be retiring this year, but as of two weeks ago, people saying, no, he's going to stay another year. <laughs> Not going to happen. I've, I've, I've made promises uh, to, to four little boys at home. Uh, I got a 14, a 12, a 7, and a 6. So. Really cool ages right now, and uh, it's time for Dad to uh, go to Little League games and flag football games and school plays and stuff like that. Um, it, you know, I've, I've played professional baseball for 23 years, and it's, it's time to start the next chapter of my life. Do you want to do other things in baseball or other ventures? I think eventually you'll probably see me back in uniform somewhere. Um, I don't know as a hitting coach or, or, or whatnot, but for the time being, I'd, I'd like to take some time off and, like I said, uh, be able to dedicate some time to, to the boys. Um, I'm, people don't realize I've never been on a spring break vacation with my kids. I've never been on a summer vacation with my kids. and. Um, I like I got some bucket list things that I'd like to do, but you know before I uh, uh, shove off this earth. So uh, um, I'm looking forward to when the next five or six weeks is over. Obviously, hopefully we make the playoffs. I'm focused up until then, but uh, it's a win-win for me because I'm, I'm looking forward to both. So we'll give you a little time off, and then we might see another A on your on your uh, hat again. Well, we'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Uh, hope, maybe, hopefully, we'll, we'll, maybe some TV right off the get. Okay. You know, just kind of on a part-time basis, and then, you know, three, four, five years down the road, uh, uh, when the kids get sick of me, then uh, maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll jump back into a hitting coach position well, as long or something. As you can hold the mic and look into the camera, Trevor. It'll be fine. It'll be yeah. a no. Yeah, yeah, no brainer for you. Yeah. Do you consider? After your career, maybe staying with this organization, or do you want to try other things? You know, I, I don't know. I haven't got that far. Um, uh, you know, it's always an option. Uh, I love the game of baseball. I, I don't love to travel. Um, so what, whatever, whatever my job is, uh, hopefully the travel won't, won't be as, as tough as it is now. But uh, and I get to spend more time with my family. Mm -hmm. But uh, but other than that, I love everything about it. Did you ever want to go back to Tennessee, or did you always want to stay in Denver now? No, I, Denver's, Denver's my home now. Um, it's where my, my kids were born, and uh, you know we, we, we've been there um, you know, a long time, and um, yeah, I, I can't see myself ever leaving. You know what, you're not done yet, but when you are, do you think you might stay here and maybe do something else, or maybe just try something altogether different? Uh, you know, I don't know. I would love to own a team, be an owner, and be able to call the shots. Um, other than that, I couldn't see myself coaching or managing at all because well, the travel gets kind of tough throughout the years. Well, there's certainly been a lot to celebrate this year at the Los Angeles Dodgers. There's new ownership, new players. It was the 50th anniversary of Dodger Stadium and the 25th anniversary of my next guest. For 25 years, these hands have been playing the organ at Dodger Stadium. During the national anthem, they accompany some of the biggest names in music and some up-and-comers, too. And during the seventh inning stretch, her fans in the stand have a chance to sing along as she plays Take Me Out to the Ball Game. But Nancy B. Heffley's fans aren't just in the stands, they're on the field. Just try doing an interview with her. Everybody knows you. You know how many, you know how many Dodger fans love you? All of them. So we are here with the queen of the press box, as we call her, also known as Nancy B. Heffley. Nancy, 25 years you've been playing that organ here, and uh, that, that's a long time to have one job. It sure is, but I, I don't even consider it a job anymore. It's just fun meeting everybody and getting to hang out with everybody in the press box. And the, the ones that come from the other teams, they all come over and say hi to me. You know, it's just really a cool job. Okay, now a few years ago, we started getting Nancy down here on the field, and every single player would come up to her and say, Nancy, Nancy B, Nancy B. Now, did you know players a long time ago, too? No. There goes Ethier. Excuse me. <laughs> Ethier, don't you pass me by. Okay. How you doing? Ethier. How you doing? Good. Good. 
doing good. How you doing? Hi, Kershaw. How you doing? Good I to see you. you. Yes. It's very, it's, it's very hard to have an interview with her because, you know, she's so beloved that when the players come out, we have to stop for a minute. Whole conversation. No, it's very true. So, 25 years ago, did players come up to you like that? Players didn't even know I existed 25 years ago. I didn't ever go down on the field then. No, why, why is that? I just didn't feel I had the right to go down. I, I, you know, I know you're always surprised, but just like Matt was telling us about Juan Pierre, when he ran out from center field to meet you, they all love you and they know you. I, it, it is surprising to me because I don't play their kind of music, so I don't know why, you know. You know what I think it is, is I think that a lot of players are old school and they love hearing the organ, especially when they're down here. They, they may have a different style of music, but they love hearing what only you could do. Well, I don't know if I'm the only one that can do it. But. I think so. I think so. You know, I know you've played over the years for some amazing people. You've, you've accompanied them for the national anthem. Oh, yes. That's, that's one of the things that's been really fun. And, and the new ones that are coming in, like the one we had last night, was just phenomenal. And, and um, they, they seem so surprised that I can accompany them. <laughs> But I, I am, I'm a follower, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't follow well, uh, but that I follow better than I lead, so. Well, I know a couple years ago, Placido Domingo was here, and then you get up-and-comers from American Idol and all over TV as well. Yes, yes, it's the ones that uh, want to be someone that are the hardest yeah. to work with, but, yes. uh, but we've had some good ones this year. And after 25 years of playing the organ, the Dodgers asked these hands to throw out the first pitch for her very first time. Let's just say this beloved icon was pitch perfect. And 2012 marked the very first time that Vince Scully had a bobblehead. Now we caught up with the broadcasting legend who talks about having the bobblehead and what his plan was to throw out the first pitch. I want to just uh, tell you one thing that um, it'll be a little bit of a surprise, but instead of throwing out the first ball tonight, I will go to the mound, I will make believe I'm going to make a big wind up and toss, and I'm going to give the ball to my granddaughter. They'll all be lined up on the third base foul line. And I'll give the ball to my granddaughter who is singing the anthem. She will then pass the ball along to each of the 15 grandchildren present. And then the last child will give me the ball and I'll flip it to Don Mattingly. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, uh, I mean, I'm not interested in throwing out the first ball. What I am interested in is the fact that every one of the 15 grandchildren can say for the rest of their lives, you know, I once had a part in the first ball ceremony at Dodger Stadium. And to me, that would be a, a great thing for them to have. So uh, I guess passing, not the torch, we'll be passing the ball, <laughs> which is better than passing the ball. <laughs> what are Get the age ranges of the 15 grandchildren? The oldest one is 22, and the youngest would be five. And if we can keep them in line, you know, uh, yeah, I, I just kept thinking, you know, it, it's nice to have the honor of throwing out the first ball, but I've done that. They've been very gracious to me here. Uh, one time I threw out the first ball and um, it was opening day and the Dodgers were playing Arizona and uh, I went to the mound. Now, anyone who's going to throw out the first ball, if you go to the mound, you're asking for trouble. I mean, you haven't warmed up, you have a suit jacket on, and there were several famous former Dodgers on the mound, and they all kept saying, Vinny, don't go to the mound, get back on the grass. And I said, no, no, I got this handled. And I went into a big wind-up, and as I was winding up, because I saw the ESPN tape, as I was winding up, Buck Showalter, the manager of Arizona, was naturally first introduced, so he was by home plate. And as I wound up, Buck keeps backing up, afraid that I'm going to hit him in the head, you know, understandably. But I had it all set up, and my big wind up, and I started to throw the ball, and Eric Karros stepped out of the Dodger line. 
he caught the ball and then he relayed it to home plate. That was that, that's the only relay that I know of first ball ceremony. So I kept thinking, what can I do tonight that would be different? Not for me. And then I thought, you know what? Why don't I include the little ones in it? It'll be kind of special for them. So if it works, uh, 15 grandchildren will have a hand in throwing out the first ball. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Maria Serrano, and I'll see you next time.